Hi, I'm IKEA, and for today's video, we're jumping into the second installment of Things and Stuffs, where we'll go over things that may be interesting and stuffs that may be worthwhile to know. And uh, let's jump right in. And uh, to start it off, there is this uh, little oddity here, and we are in the bank headquarters, just having come down uh, the elevator shafts after the first boss, uh, heading into this uh, fight uh, in this room. But before there, there is this uh, blinking red button here. And this button has fascinated me for the longest of times, as it is here, it is blinking, it's next to a door, and above it, it says authorized personnel only. <laughs> so I have tried a lot of things. Uh, I have uh, hung around this room and tried uh, a billion million things. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, maybe if I bring attention to it, uh, either somebody already knows how to do this, and maybe there's a secret attached to it, or bring interest to it and maybe get some more people to uh, roam around this area and maybe find uh, the secret that will open the store. Um, I don't think it will be something because there's a lot of places where there are buttons like this next to doors and they do nothing. This one is blinking though. and just has been in the back of my head for forever. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. And for our first stuffs of the episode, with the fire cam, there is a simple instruction that uh, a lot of people uh, missed, and that is uh, under the controls here at the bottom. It says detonate, and it says double tap, and the button that is on. Um, a lot of people will uh, fire the cam and then shoot at it to ignite it. Uh, you don't need to do that at all. Uh, what you can do much more easily is actually fire the cam out. Once it is on the ground and dispersed, you can double tap the button that it's on, and it will ignite it. Um, and that is very handy to know and actually core to fire eclipsing. But there is another place as well where double tapping does something, and that is with the mortar. The mortar normally follows your uh, aim point and uh, tries to fire there. But what you can do is actually double tap and uh, the button that it's on. And then, as you saw, there was a little visual effect, as, uh, as we'll see it there again. A little ping and uh, that means that it's locked to that area so i can look somewhere else and uh, be a cool growl and not look at explosions and uh, the handy thing of this is of course you can mark an area and then you can you can be shooting at something else and just firing a mortar there but if you um, basically are button mashing <laughs> you will likely lock it to one place like this and a lot of people get frustrated and don't understand what is happening and you have to be kind of deliberate with the Quick, deliberate double tap, and then you'll get a loose again. But yeah, double tapping for some of the skills, uh, specifically these two actually, uh, does something specific. So yeah, that's a handy stuff, you know. And for our uh, oddity here as a, as a thing, we have uh, by the world's end control point uh, here in uh, downtown West, there is a little odd area here, which has an invisible wall, basically, somewhat. It is uh, likely a remnant of a hitbox of something but the oddity especially is that if you take a running start as i did there there is no wall but especially if you run a little slower or run at an angle you will definitely get caught up with it meaning that it isn't just a hitbox of a missing item it is very much something that is a little bit odd because as long as you come at it without much momentum you'll definitely get caught up on it but if you take a running start you just straight go through Let's move on to the next one. And uh, at this place, we have another similar thing. Uh, we are here by the overgrowth, as uh, brought up by uh, Blackbird uh, up there, as they uh, have submitted it in the Discord. And uh, this is very much a similar area, where we have an invisible wall, where especially coming at it uh, from the other side, you will uh, usually be able to pass through it. But going back, especially with low momentum, you will always get caught up on, uh, on an invisible wall here, and uh, it's somewhat similar as well, as usually if you have enough momentum, you do get to pass through it. Especially if you come at it at an angle, you'll get caught up on it. Uh, and yeah, another oddity. And here we are at a similar oddity, similar but different. We are here uh, south of the bank headquarters at this uh, little corner down there. And uh, the oddity here is that there is this little wall here. Uh, this little wall, once you look at it, definitely doesn't seem like it belongs here because it's intersecting with uh, other objects. If you look a little bit closer and especially look underneath uh, this, uh, these plants and kind of <laughs> look up, um, you see something odd and that there is basically no floor underneath them, of course. 
And actually, yeah, if you look next door, there is a similar item, a similar wall, but a little bit shorter and uh, covering up uh, the, <laughs> the, the ground uh, to have it be a plant box. And this is what this wall used to be as well. They moved it out. There used to be out of bounds here where you could uh, fall through the world. Uh, they fixed that, but at some point as well, they broke it as well. And uh, yeah, this wall has been uh, lingering in this uh, place and uh, being very out of place uh, for quite a while. And uh, here we are at a little bit more of a substantial one. We are at the Rayburn House, uh, that side mission area here, with the, which is in southwest, in the far east of it. Uh, this is an area that you can really only access uh, during the side mission, but also during bounties, which is how I got here, as the game really likes putting bounties here, as we showed in uh, Bounty Cheesing. Uh, and uh, there's this little elevator here that normally, if you just walk down it, it's perfectly fine. But uh, as uh, Scooby as well uh, up there shows, uh, this is an elevator to help. <laughs> and uh, let us show you why. And that is because if you come at it at the right angle and the right speed and roll at the right time, you will uh, fall through and <laughs> say goodbye to the world as you uh, fall all the way down to hell. Eventually, we will hit solid ground and we will get reset all the way back up as uh, we are out of bounds a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> but yeah, you'll get reset back up there. And yeah, it, it may take a few tries, but if you uh, run at it at the elevator and do a roll, eventually you'll fall through. And uh, here we are for another minor out of bounds. We are here at uh, the gate in the Civic Center, all the way in the northern parts of uh, New York here. And uh, there is this little area here that is with this uh, yellow tarp over it. And uh, that should give away, yeah, where we're headed, kind of. As uh, this one as well was uh, brought to us by uh, Scooby, um, together with the previous one. And uh, yeah, we're going to jump up here. We're going to go over here-ish. And uh, there is this little area that is likely just overlooked, where you can uh, jump down and uh, be <laughs> behind the scenes, basically. As we are here very much out of bounds and uh, also the only way to get out of here is to fast travel so if you're in a group you can fast travel to your allies but here i'll just have to fast travel away and uh, while you can be here and actually you can shoot from this side all the way through and uh, hit enemies if you can hit the enemies especially but yeah as you see we have hit markers uh, enemies on the other side can't shoot through here but this place is uh, not very usable because here, for instance, I have a random patrol and yeah, we got to edge that in, but uh, oftentimes if you want to cheese this for maybe for the control point, they can spawn there. That is one of their spawns, but they have also a spawn all the way over there. So you're out of position for that. And yeah, we are behind the scenes as well. And yeah, that yellow tarp that was here, uh, we're looking at it from the wrong direction. And as oftentimes works in games, you only see it from one direction. Yeah, let's move on to the next. And uh, we are here by uh, this control point, the sinkhole, which is an East Mall, of course. And uh, the sinkhole has a hole uh, as we are here in its uh, backside, as we've gone around on the um, uh, western, northwestern side of it. There's this little area where we can actually jump up and we can jump into the control point and uh, be inside of their base and uh, setting us up the bomb, of course. And uh, while this can uh, be quite fun and be very hectic because uh, you're suddenly fighting everyone, it, uh, it is sometimes a valid tactic and I quite often actually do jump in from, from behind. And uh, here we are in the uh, Federal Triangle in the western parts of it. We are here by close by the classified that is here nearby. One street down, basically, and there is this uh, little uh, inconspicuous little uh, building here. But there's an entryway, and it's kind of lit up, especially at night. Uh, it's quite easy to see it. If we go in, there's a lit up elevator that will take us up. And uh, this is likely an unused area for a side mission or such, as uh, it is a little bit detailed, as there is a bar up here. And of course, we're using an elevator to get up here. And uh, there are some assets in here that I don't think have been used anywhere else. As for instance, we have these little uh, cubes that uh, look like this. There are balloons inside actually uh, that you can, for instance, as well, shoot out. And uh, I've tried many things of maybe finding uh, pathways through or trying to find other corridors here. I haven't been able to, but maybe now with some more attention on it, Maybe somebody will find uh, what it exactly is for. But what you can do, especially here, of course, is uh, come here and have yourself a jolly good time. 
and also for a jolly good time, you could come over to the campus, as we are here, of course, uh, in uh, downtown West. And uh, quite often at night, uh, in this upper area, there is actually a band playing. And uh, you could uh, come on over here and, uh, you know, get your jollies on here as well. And uh, for the mission of this, uh, of this episode, we're going to go do Stranded Tanker, as uh, it has a lot of well-hidden chests and uh, also one that I would consider a secret. And we'll go through and especially show all of the chest locations. I won't show all of the resource locations because there's a lot of them. But we'll especially go after and show all of the chests. And uh, here we are in the second room where we have uh, fought through and got into this uh, big area with uh, the big hole leading all the way down. There's actually one chest in the back here. I feel this one is decently well known by now, but uh, well worth getting, of course, still. Uh, and that's the first chest of the mission. Uh, let's move on to the second one. And uh, here we are at uh, the next area. We've uh, killed the enemies coming over. Normally you would run straight across, but there's actually a chest here. And it's um, this one I feel barely anybody knows, as I quite often enjoy going and getting it and seeing if anybody kind of follows my lead. Uh, quite often people don't, but yeah, there's a weapon crate back here, uh, well hidden in this uh, little tunnel in the back. And uh, here as well, I just briefly wanted to point out, as uh, just an oddity, as uh, this stranded tanker, of course, which is what the mission is named after. I, for the longest times as well, thought that uh, these um, uh, things hanging off of it were actually, you know, piping or something like that. But what just has actually happened is that this stranded tanker has uh, blown through that bridge over there. This is the rigging of that bridge, and uh, that's also the reason that that bridge is broken, is this stranded tanker that has come through and was way too big to go under that bridge and just completely destroyed that bridge. And uh, here we are for a next, uh, somewhat a little bit of a secret. First off, when entering this area, this is after the very first boss, uh, there is, of course, that yellow box up there that uh, most people will know as that opens the door over there. That will lead to one chest. But there is actually a second chest that you get, and that is uh, with this uh, button here. This button is linked to a ball thrower over there. And what you can do here is uh, this will start shooting balls. And if you destroy three balls, um, shoot them uh, out of the air and you will have confetti. Here we'll shoot even four because sometimes it's a little bit baggy. Once you shoot uh, mo more than three of them, usually I shoot four. You'll go into this room, and normally, of course, you would have this chest that is from the yellow box that we opened uh, or shot, uh, giving access here. But then, actually here, right behind this door, this door gets opened by shooting those three balls. It is a little bit of a little side, um, side chest, and usually not worth getting in random groups because it's just one chest, but it is a little bit of a little hidden secret. And uh, further on, once you reach uh, this big area and uh, fight your way through it, you can actually uh, jump over here. And uh, this one, most people, I feel, will know as it's also marked on your map. But yeah, there is a cleaner key chest. And key chests are, of course, well worth getting, as you might get 100 resources out of it, or uh, even an Acosta as an exotic component. And once you move on a little bit and go into this corridor, uh, there is actually, um, on the minimap, if we go a little bit further, this door. Um, and uh, behind this door, there's already actually the area marked, even on the minimap. And yeah, if we go back, there is actually a little hidden uh, chest back here. You can actually follow the yellow lines here and just uh, get to it. And if you shoot it, that door will become uh, available to be opened. And <laughs> this one as well, I feel uh, a lot of people miss because everybody just runs through that corridor. Uh, and yeah, there is uh, one chest behind here. And uh, well, we're getting so as we'll uh, move on. And once we move a little bit further and are in uh, this uh, big compartment, there is actually uh, up there a roaring fire uh, that is uh, quelched by uh, turning these two valves and, uh, you know, making it uh, lose its uh, fuel. And uh, that's the first one. Um, and you can go back and go uh, here and get the second one. And uh, that will lead as well to one uh, armor crate. Uh, this one takes a little bit too long usually to do it in groups or in matchmate. But usually what I do is once we get in here, I'll look if somebody's going for the valve uh, there. That will likely mean that they know. And uh, I'll go for this other valve then. 
and uh, together we'll go and get our loot. And usually once uh, people see, because that's of course the door that most people <laughs> will go for, we will see that somebody's heading over here. They'll usually, uh, you know, get curious and uh, come and check it out. And uh, here we're going to actually have a tactics section. Um, here, of course, we have this uh, fight with these heavies. Quite often as well, people will uh, run across, uh, pulling the heavies across. It's much more worthwhile to fight them here. And also just to show uh, the tactic against fighting them. Of course, you have Golden Bullet on making uh, the next few easy, but just to show the tactic, they have on their right side, right behind on their backpack, as I'll fall away a little bit because I need, do need to ADS for it, of course, is uh, there is a little weak point there that I blew up. Once you blow that weak point up, they will actually uh, start doing an animation to remove their helmet, but especially as well with a shock that will instantly remove their helmet and then you can instantly shoot them in their face. And also here we're heading to the last one and uh, that is a very simple one. There's a key chest back here. Um, I don't feel many people miss this one, but some teams I see quite often just running into the boss room. Uh, it's well worth getting those, of course, still. And uh, yeah, we'll head into the boss room for me, but uh, we'll uh, go towards a conclusion for uh, for these things and stuffs. And thus, we have reached the end of uh, episode two of Things and Stuff. And uh, this, of course, will be an ongoing series. And if you want to uh, help it out as well, and uh, if you think you know a few things and stuffs that might be worth sharing, um, in my community Discord, there's a Things and Stuffs channel, and that is where we are collecting all of these uh, tidbits uh, for me to go and uh, put together these. And of course, I'm uh, taking some for my own knowledge, and uh, if anybody else um, provides them and uh, uh, shows them there, I will, of course, as with today, uh, show them and, uh, of course, give credit. So yeah, if you want to show up yourself in one of these things and stuffs, uh, go and add as many things and stuffs that you know to uh, to the things and stuffs channel. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, hope you join me, for instance, as well for my streams that have been going on on YouTube and uh, Twitch, both. As uh, this, of course, as well has been filmed on Twitch, actually, as uh, that is where I usually film my build showcases and my things and stuffs uh, series. So yeah, hope you enjoyed and uh, hope to see you in the future. And as always, have a good night.